Hello, welcome to the very first Arduino video blog. Now, a couple of weeks ago on Hackaday, there was a guy doing ray tracing on an Arduino, and that's pretty cool, but I think we can do better than that. So, raw videotape. Right, so this is an Arduino, and I'm sure you know it. It's based on the Atmel Mega 328 chip with 32K program memory, 2K RAM, blah, blah, blah. I'm sure you know the rest. But still quite a powerful little chip for doing, you know, a little ray traced scene on. No problem. What if we try and do it on an Atmel Tiny 85? Now, this is the, the baby brother of this chip. So it's got a quarter of the program memory, a quarter of the RAM. Obviously a lot less pins, you know, it doesn't have a serial port or whatever, but they are compatible. You can program this in the Arduino IDE, and the co same code will run on this chip and this chip. Very handy. If you want to make a really tiny little project, use a Tiny85. But resources are very limited. So let's see what we've got. On the other end of these wires, we've got a tiny colour screen. It's running as an I squared C device, as you see here, at address 27. It's connected to my Tiny85, and the Tiny85 obviously running on its uh, internal oscillator. There's no crystals, no nothing else. All you need is the chip. That's it. So if you want to make a project with a Tiny85, yeah, just the chip on its own. Good enough. And at the moment, it's not powered up. This is the 5 volt wire here. Trying to get everything on camera. And as soon as I connect that there, power up the chip, the program should start running. And there it is, we're off. Ray tracing on an Atmel Tiny85. Now obviously it's not a very fast chip for doing this kind of work. So it takes a little while for the scene to appear. But as you can see, let's see if I can zoom in a bit. And I go past it without a focus. There we go. There we go. Nearly there. A few more lines. And ta da! Ray tracing on a Tiny 85. And just in case you're wondering how fast a Tiny 85 is compared to a desktop PC, I'm going to run the exact same program on this laptop here. So I've got it set up. As soon as I press enter, it will open the file, run the program. Okay, three, two, one. Bang, there it is. You know, it's literally tens of thousands of times faster. And that's not terribly surprising. I mean, look at this chip. It's only running at 16 megahertz, whereas the PC runs at 1.6 gigahertz. So that's 100 times faster CPU clock rate. And also the PC does the math in hardware, and the Tiny85 has to do it in software. Oh. And if we look at this page, it tells us exactly how slow that is. Uh, this is an AVR2 instruction set on the Tiny85. So to do an add, it takes 113 clock cycles, and the PC would do that in like one cycle. To do a multiply, 375 cycles, and division, 466 cycles. So maybe, what's the average of that going to be? Something like 200 clock cycles to do what the PC does in one or two cycles. So we'll call that 200 times slower. 200 times slower for the math. 100 times slower CPU clock rate. You know, that translates 20,000 times faster at doing math. You would need 20,000 Tiny 85s to do the same amount of work. And let's take a look at the source code. Now, I'll put this on the website when I'm finished. Link down below. So you can download it, try it for yourself. Make sure I'm not cheating. Make sure it really is a Tiny85 and not some sort of ARM chip on that board. And if you've got an Arduino of your own with a big colour screen, you can maybe have a go at porting it. And if you do make it run on some sort of weird and wonderful device, send me some pictures and I'll put it on the website. I'll make a little gallery of user images. Okay? Anyway, there's three files in the sketch. This is the main file, it just has your Arduino setup and loop functions. 
and there's not much in there just initialize the display device and then it actually ray traces the scene twice I didn't show that in the video but it does that once with no anti-aliasing which is what you saw and then it does a second pass on the display with some anti-aliasing to really kind of improve the image quality so if you're running it on a big screen you'll see that you'll see the first pass appear quickly and then it will render it again and you'll see the shadows it's got a really nice quality and all the, yeah, the floor smoothed out, things like that. And the second file in the sketch is display.h. This is the file you need to change to make this run on different types of screens, different types of devices, that sort of thing. And you need to provide exactly four functions. The first two are here. This is the width and height of the device. So my screen is 96 by 64 pixels. Then the next function is just to initialize the screen. And in my case, I uh, cleared the screen. And I do that by sending a C and an L. And the fourth and final function is a function to set a single pixel on the display. And that takes an X and Y coordinate. So X is across, Y is down. And R, G, B colors. And R, G, and B are in the range 0 to 255. So if you set the pixel at x, y, and this color on the screen, that's all you need to do. And on my screen, I had to send it uh, ESC to set the color, and then DP to draw a pixel, and the screen coordinates, and the screen sets the pixel all by itself. And the third file is tracer.h. This is the actual ray tracer code. And if you like fiddling about, there's a few values here you can play with. For example, the position of the camera, where the camera is pointing, the field of view of the camera, so it's like a zoom lens effect, the softness of the shadows in the scene. The uh, shadows are actually quite soft and diffuse if you give it time to ray trace it. Here we've got the materials in the scene. I've got three materials defined. There's kind of a shiny mirror material, red material, blue material. And if we look at the scene again, you can see those. These two are the spheres uh, in the shiny mirror material, the dark blue material, and a red material. So you can change those values. And then down here, we've got the positions and radius of the four spheres in the scene. If you want to add more spheres, you can. If you want to write your name or draw figures, there might be a bit of memory left to do that. So one, two, three, four spheres. And the final value here is the material it uses. So 0 is the first material, 1 the second material, and 2 is the third material in the list. And that's about it. All the rest is some vector math, ray tracing. And it's about how many lines? 324 lines. And it compiles down to 7,964 bytes. So there's about... 200 bytes left. Plenty of room to add some extra spheres and mess about. And again, if you do that, send me some of the results and I'll put it on the gallery on the website. Okay? See you there. So, there you have it. The very first Arduino video blog. Hope you enjoyed watching it. I mean, I had fun making it, so that's what counts. And if you do do anything weird or wonderful with the source code, you know, do we start rendering fly-throughs on your Arduinos on huge screens or whatever, let me know. I'd love to see it. And if you like the video, subscribe, of course. And see you next time.